Hi again. So now I'm going to solve a problem that is just a direct application of fluid pressure, or what could be one application for fluid pressure uh, in statics. Let me show you what is this. I'm going to solve this problem, and it says for given for the given concrete dam. This is the concrete dam here. Uh, it is required that the factor of safety, factor of safety, against overturning and or sliding are at least two value of two magnitude of two. The density of the concrete is 2,500 kilogram per cubic meter, and the density of the water, which is this part here, this is the water, uh, is 1,000 kilogram per cubic meter. Coefficient of friction between the concrete and the granular soil below here is mu equals 0 0.7. Are the safety requirements met? If not, find a possible solution to make the designer safer. This is what I'm talking about. The sliding, the sliding is just that because the this is pushing the dam, well the dam might be a, might be doing this. And if the dam does that is failing. That's one of them. The overturning, if this is going to overturn due to the water, well the overturning has to happen with respect to this point here. So if the water push it in this way, I know there are other forces involved and that's what we're going to be analyzing, but if the, the water is, over, is pushing it there, that's what is going to happen. This is what the overturning refers to. So basically, overturning can be calculated by determining all the forces and calculating moment with respect to that point. And a sliding is just horizontal forces, which basically are given because one of them is going to come from the uh, pressure for the water and the other one is going to come from the friction in this part. Now, factor of safety. Factor of safety is a very interesting concept. And the factor of safety for overturning let's say this is the point O, the factor of safety for overturning is defined as the ratio between the moments that are trying to keep this in, this in place, or reacting moments, if you want to call it like that, and the moments that are trying to make it overturn with respect to that point. Now let's see what are those forces involved. A sliding is the same thing. Is the friction force in this direction, how, how bigger is the friction force compared with the pushing of the water? That would be the factor of safety for a sliding. So before doing anything else, let's uh, make a point here and let's say that this is going to be, we don't know how long is this dam in that direction in that direction. So we are assuming that we are going to do it by unit uh, of length. So this is going to be one meter also in that part to make it, I don't know, simpler because I don't want to keep L, 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 L instead, instead of L, I put one. At the end, if I know how much is this length, I just multiply my total resource by L and that will be sufficient. So let's study first what forces are involved here. First, this is concrete. So if this is concrete, this is what is going to happen. I'm going to have the force coming from the weight of the concrete, and I can separate this in, like we did when we calculated distributed forces also. I can convert this in a rectangular area, which is going to have a weight applied here. I'm going to call that weight of concrete one. And I'm going to have another triangle here, which is going to be the centroid here and the weight is going to be there, and I'm going to call that weight of concrete 2. The distances, well, you know the distances, because we have to calculate now with respect to this point here, then my distances are, I'm going to put my distances refer to this point also here. So the distance from this axis, let's, let me put the axis here correctly, that's all slanted. Let's say this is y axis and this is x axis here. So the distance for W concrete 2 is going to be this, and we know that distance is going to be two thirds from this angle, two thirds of the base. If this is one and this is four, that means this is three meters here. 
and if this is two thirds of three, that means this is two meters, this distance. Now the other distance is here. How much is that distance? Well, from here to here. How much is that distance? This is three plus half of the base, 3.5 meter. I need that. So let's start by calculating the forces. These are the two forces from the concrete. Now, the water, remember the water? The water is gonna start from this point. If this is the surface of the water, that's assumed to be zero, and it's gonna vary triangularly in this direction, like that. And this is the force coming from the water. First, I'm going to work with the overturning part. This here, the pressure here is going to be gamma H, where H is 6, or gamma death, gamma 6, and it's going to be gamma water, of course, gamma water times 6. And I have the density of the water, so it's 1,000 times 9.8, 1,000 times 9.8, or 9.81 times 6. That's going to be the value of the distributed load here. Remember, 1,000 is density, so this is going to be density times G times H, which is 6. This value here, then, it will be 1,000 times 9.81 times 6, 58,860. 58,860. This is kilograms. And this is 9.81, so 58. 860, I'm gonna say 58.86. This is kilogram, this is meter square second, kilogram cubic meter. So I'm gonna say that this value here, if I multiply by one in that direction, is gonna be equal to, uh, once again, this is kilogram cubic meter, this is meter square second, uh, kilonewton. Kilonewton is meter square. That is correct, right? Yeah, that's correct. Now, the total load applied here, coming from the water, the pressure of the water, is going to be this value times H divided by 2. Now, this is by meter, because I already multiplied it by that meter, so that's only by meter. So this value here is going to be 58.86, which is this value, multiplied by h, which is 6, and divided by 2, the area of the triangle, because we already multiplied by that one. So that value is going to be 58.86 times 3, that's the value of the force. This value of the force is 176.58 kilonewton. 176.58 kilonewton. That's that force over there. What else do we have here? The location, 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 location. Location is one third of the height. This is six. One third of six equals two from the base. Now everything is done, but we have to calculate now WC1 and WC2. So WC1 is just the area or the the area of this face multiplied by one. So it's going to be 1 times 6 times 1 in that direction to make it volume, multiplied by the density of the concrete, multiplied by 9.81, which is G. So this is density of the concrete, this is G, this is in the base, if you want to call it like that, base of the rectangle, and this is the height of the rectangle, and this is the length of the prism, because now it's a prism, not a rectangle. So you have 6 times 2500 times 9.81, that's equal to 147.15 <coughs> kilonewton. Now for this other part of the dam, then you have WC2, which is the area. What is the area? 3 times 6 divided by 2. That's the area. Multiply by 1. This one, remember, is this distance here, the unitary, the unit distance. Multiply by gamma of the concrete. 
multiply by gravity and WC2 is going to be, let me use my calculator again this is 9 times 2500 times 9.81 and that's 220.725 kilonewton there you go, we have this, we have this, we have everything now, what are the acting moments and what are the reacting moments? Let's go back to our drawing here again. If I do moment with respect to this point, the only thing that is trying to make this to overturn is the water in that way. The weight of the dam is actually producing a moment in this direction. So this is the moment that acts in our favor and this is the moment that is unfavorable for us. So let's calculate the moment due to that to the dam and the moment uh, we can call it the stabilizing moment if you want to stabilizing moment due to this one with respect to the point O because this is the point where the overturning will happen so let's do summation of moments stabilizing moments with respect to the point O it's going to be equal to this value WC2 which is 220.725 multiplied by this distance that's going to give us that times 2 plus this value 147.15 multiplied times this distance 3.5 and that's it the, the, uh, let's say the stabilizing moment with respect to O it would be this value times 2 plus this other value this value times 3.5 and that's 956 956.5 kilonewton meter that's the stabilizing moment now the other moment, the moment caused by the water is called the overturning moment. So the overturning moment, overturning moment, overturning moment with respect to O also, is going to be this one only, which is this force, 176.58 multiply by this distance and this distance is 2 so this is 3 this is 16, 17, I don't want to mess up 0.58 times 2, this is like guys, there's nothing here pre-recorded I'm solving this as I'm working with you 353.353 meter. So what is our factor of safety for overturning? Our factor of safety for overturning is going to be this moment, the stabilizing moment, 956.5 divided by the overturning moment. Let me box this here. So overturning moment which is 353.2 and the factor of safety against overturning is 2.7 2.7 which is greater than 2 that means okay that means that for overturning at least that dam is safe no problem with that now the other part that we have to do is the part related with the sliding so let's start with the sliding what forces do we have here for sliding once again we have our dam here this is going to push it in that direction and the only thing that is opposing to that will be the force coming from the friction here of the base and that friction force is mu multiplied by the normal remember physics that's what you learn in physics pieces of information we are putting them together mu multiplied by the normal so let's do that calculation and I'll do it here so now we have again a sliding again a sliding then we have 
that we had the friction force is mu and mu is 0 0.7 multiplied by the normal but the normal is the summation of these two forces here so those two forces are we we add them we add them up before no we didn't so 357 point we didn't add them up together so this is 147.15 plus 220.725 this is the normal force the addition of this and these, these two, that's going to be the normal force so the friction force should be equal to calculator plus 220.725 times mu which is 0.7 that's 257.5 that is the normal force and the total force coming from the water the resultant force coming from the water we calculated before and it was 176.56.58 remember those units are in kilonewton so once again our factor of safety should be this one which is the one that is holding it and this one that is the one that is trying to move so our factor of safety for a sliding would be 257.5 divided by 176.58 and that is equal to 1.5 <coughs> which is smaller than 2 so not okay we have to have at least two that means that our dam theoretically according to these calculations is failing for sliding now the second part is if it's not overturning is perfect now the sign safer look if this is this divided by this the water the only thing that we could do if we can is lower the level of the water because that in that case this will be a smaller force and if this is a smaller force then we are uh, we are getting a bigger factor of safety for overturning and at the same time because this force is going to be smaller here this value is going to be bigger but I don't think that you can do that because usually those level of waters are the waters that you have to have another solution if this is already built is like putting a big weight here on top because that's going to increase the normal force also here but I don't know if this force now on the soil we are not considering the sinking of this so I don't know if that is going to be convenient but if this is not built and we are just doing the design we can increase the weight by increasing the area and this I'm going to keep it fixed but I'm going to increase the base if I increase the base I'm going to increase this area which is going to increase this weight that's what we're going to do so let's improve that by increasing that weight now how much should be the weight well if remember that a factor of safety factor of safety should be for sliding the force friction force divided by the uh, no yeah this is the friction force which is the resistive force divided by 176.58 what is 176.58 176.58 here is uh, the weight of the water which we are not changing the resultant force from the water this I can change this I'm not changing so my point is if I know this friction force this friction force is gonna be the normal multiplied by mu divided by resultant force of the water so if I solve for normal my normal force should be the factor of safety which I'm gonna make two at least multiplied by the resultant force of the water divided by mu and remember this normal force is gonna be uh, due to the area of the dam so I'm gonna first calculate this based on these values the normal force factor of safety two at least weight of the water 176.58 
divided by mu 0 0.7. So my normal force should be at least 2 times 176.58 divided by 0.7. And thus, normal force should be at least 504.5 kilonewton. Now, if you remember that normal force is the area multiplied by gamma of the concrete. That's the normal force. So I can solve for the area if I want to by saying 504.5 divided by gamma of the concrete. And the gamma of the concrete is 2500. This is kilonewton. This is kilonewton. So I have to multiply by 10 to the third to make it in newton. And this is going to be 2500 uh, kilogram per cubic meter times 9.81 meter square second square second second square and this is going to be times one also of course so 504 times 1000 divided by 2500 divided by 9.81 the area should be the area should be 20 0.6. It's going to be in cubic meters, but it's not such thing as cubic meters because remember uh, we are multiplying by the unit length, so meter square. And this area, if I'm keeping this constant, has to be equal to the area of the trapezoid, which is 1 plus, I'm going to call the base x, times the height, which is 6, divided by 2. Base 1 plus base 2 times height divided by 2. So I solve for x. x is going to be 20.6 times 2 divided by 6 minus 1. And x should be times 2 divided by 6 minus 1. So that means that my x, which is the base, should be 5.9 meters. This is the minimum of the base that is going to provide me with that force. Let's say build the base equal to 6 meters if you want to be just on the dot. With the base of 6 meters, the way we calculated that, that will provide sufficient uh, factor of safety of 2 at least, which is what we are asked against the sliding. You see, this is a really, really cool example, and we did a bunch of things. We include a bunch of engineering values, engineering details, engineering factors like factor of safety for overturning, for sliding, we study that. We incorporate the centroid, center of gravity, submerged surfaces, friction force, and safety. I hope that you enjoy the video guys and follow it because it's a really nice example and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good day.